Okay, so you've been given an assignment to create a scatter plot or some kind of graph uh, or chart on a Google Sheet, and you are wondering how in the world do I do that? And specifically, if I'm creating a scatter plot, how do I make a line of best fit? So that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to start off with this very simple uh, Google Sheet I've put together. Here I have my x variable, whatever that's going to be, it's going to be your independent variable. And here I've got my y variable. These are made up numbers, I just type them into these columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the upper left hand most uh, data point. Now you can click on the title. So for instance, if I had a title for this, uh, let's say it was the number of people, um, I don't know, going into a hospital or something like that, and this was the amount of time it took to serve them. Well, that's what I could put in for these labels, and they might automatically generate on the chart. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and click just the data points that I want, and I'm going to drag them down so that they're all highlighted, both X and Y. And I'm going to go up here to Insert on the ribbon, and I'm going to press Chart. Now, it's going to generate, <laughs> it's going to generate any old kind of chart here. Uh, it might not be the kind of chart that you want it to generate, so we're going to have to make some changes. So if you click on the chart, uh, it's going to give you, you know, a lot of options to do stuff over here. But what I want you to do is I want you to go over here to chart type. So here we can see it's generated a line graph. Here with the line graph, we can see that we can actually choose whether or not we want it to be a bar graph, which here they call a column chart, uh, a Y versus X, all right, or a scatter chart. Sorry, uh, <laughs> this is a area chart, excuse me, uh, a scatter chart, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a scatter chart because that's probably what you've been uh, asked to do. So after you've chosen scatter chart and you've got your scatter plot here comparing those two variables and seeing if there's a correlation between them, obviously there is, right? There's a positive correlation, a strong one. We can then go to customize. Uh, under customize, you can then go to chart style, choose different themes and fonts and all that sort of stuff. But I want you to do, uh, what I want you to do is go to chart and access titles. Here you're going to start with the chart title. It's always important to have a chart title. Here I'm going to go ahead and say this is a test chart uh, example. Okay, And you can see that it appears right here in the top as test chart example. I'm then going to go to my horizontal axis title. This is going to be my independent variable, <laughs> independent variable, whatever that might be. And don't forget about your units. Your units are very important. Then go to my vertical axis, and this is going to be my dependent variable. Apparently I can't spell, that's fine. I'm a science teacher. Uh, all right, so dependent variable and also your unit. So there I've got everything set up. Now if I wanted to actually change uh, the range of my data here, because you see uh, the, the increments on these axes were pre-selected, if I wanted to change those, I could go down here to horizontal or vertical axis, and I could insert minimum and maximum values. For now, I'm just going to go with what they gave me, uh, and, and it'll be great. Now, if we're going to go ahead and insert uh, a line of best fit, right, which is going to show that trend line very clearly, something good to add to any scatter plot, I'm going to want to go to series. Now, in series, there's a couple of fun things you can do. You can change the color of your uh, little dots in there. So whatever color you think is best, I like green. Uh, and you can also change the shape of the points. Uh, I like triangles. So, you know, whatever. Whatever works for, for you, whatever floats your boat, uh, this can uh, allow you to get a little stylish with your graph. But you're going to go down here, and you can see this is where you would normally add error bars. If we are working with a column chart, you could add in error bars. Uh, or data labels, but here I want to press trend line, and it's going to automatically draw a trend line through my data. I can change the opacity, which means uh, whether or not it is shows up as a solid line or whether it shows up as just the, almost the faint ghost of a line. I can change the line's thickness uh, or add labels to the line. It also has down here show R squared. Now, if you know, this is related to Pearson's correlation coefficient. And it can be very nice to show because here, r squared equals 1. Well, that makes sense. There is a super strong correlation here within this data. And that just basically shows that here with that nice r squared figure. It's a great thing to add to any graph, especially if you're trying to show statistical significance. The closer it is to 1, 
the more significant the correlation, which in this case, good God, yes, there is a significant correlation. So I hope that's helped you uh, just as a quick tutorial on how to create one of those uh, charts and to um, do those trend lines. Hope you have fun with your assignment. All right, guys, take care.